landlord uh, than maybe a private sector landlord. We are, yes, sir. I ask unanimous consent that further proceedings on the form call be dispensed with. Without objection. I ask unanimous consent that it be in order to move to proceed to H.R. 268. Is there objection? Without objection. I move to proceed to H.R. 268. The clerk will report. Calendar number 15, H.R. 268, an act making supplemental appropriations for the fiscal year ending oh, September 30, 2019, and further purposes. I know no further debate on the motion to proceed. Is there further debate? Hearing none, the question is on the motion to proceed. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes appear to have it. The ayes do have it. The motion is agreed to. I call up the clerk will report. Count number 15, H.R. 268, an act making supplemental appropriations for the fiscal year ending September 30, 2019, and for other purposes. I call up the Shelby Amendment at the desk. The clerk will report. Senator from Kentucky, Mr. McConnell, for Mr. Shelby, proposes an amendment number five to H.R. 268. I ask the reading be dispensed with. Without objection. I ask, Mr. President. The minority leader is recognized. I ask consent that the pending amendment be set aside and call up my amendment number six. Is there objection? Without objection. I ask the that clerk the reading will report. Senator from New York, Mr. Schumer, proposes an amendment numbered six. I ask the reading be dispensed with. Without objection. I further ask consent that notwithstanding Rule 22, that it be in order to file cloture on amendments five and six during Thursday's session of the Senate, and the cloture motions filed on those amendments during Thursday's session of the Senate be treated as if they were filed during today's session of the Senate and ripen at 2.30 p.m. on Thursday, January 24th, in the order filed. Is there objection? Without objection. I ask the Senate resume consideration of the motion to proceed to S-1. The clerk will report. Motion to proceed to calendar number one, S-1, a bill to make improvements to certain defense and security assistance provisions and so forth and for other purposes. I ask unanimous consent that when the Senate completes its business today, it recess until 11 a.m. Wednesday, January 23rd, and that following the prayer and pledge, the time for the two leaders be reserved for their use later in the day. Without objection. So if there's no further business to come before the Senate, I ask to stand in recess under the previous order following the remarks of the Democratic leader. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. President, <clears throat> and I thank the Republican leader. Um, the Republican leader has just announced an agreement we've reached about the schedule for f Thursday's votes, two, two votes, and both of which will be amendments to the House-passed continuing resolution. First, the Senate will vote on the President's proposal and then will vote on an amendment that is identical to the underlying bill. Now, the President said his proposal was a reasonable, reasonable compromise. In fact, it is neither reasonable nor a compromise. There was no serious negotiation with any Democrat about what went into the proposal. That's because the proposal was never intended to pass. It's only a thinly veiled attempt by the President to save face. Anyone who looks at the legislation can tell it was designed to fail. In exchange for the wall, the President offers only limited temporary protections for DACA and P TPS protections he single-handedly removed. So it's sort of like bargaining for stolen goods. And then on top of that, he has proposed new radical changes to our asylum system without consulting any Democrats, changes that convert our nation's, that controvert our nation's most, most fundamental and precious values. I hope it will roundly be defeated on Thursday. The good news is, after that vote, we have a second amendment that could break us out of the morass we are in. The Senate will proceed to an amendment to the House bill that is identical to the underlying legislation. In other words, for the first time, we will get a vote on whether to open up the government without any 
decision one way or the other on border security. The proposal also adds necessary disaster aid to several states that were recently ravaged by natural disasters. People are saying, isn't there a way out of this mess? Isn't there a way to relieve the burden on the 800,000 federal workers not getting paid? Isn't there a way to get government services open first and then debate what we should do for border security? Well, now there's a way. And that is the second vote that will occur on Thursday. It would renew all of the portions of the government till February 8th, open them briefly, but open them at will, allowing workers to get paid and to get their back pay. And it will allow us to then debate without hostage taking, without temper tantrum, without anything, how we can best do border security, get, get that done, hopefully, by February 8th, and keep the government open. So if you're looking for a way to open up the government, this is the way. And I hope my Republican colleagues, many of whom were circulating a letter that does basically the same thing as this proposal without the disaster aid, <clears throat> to sign, to vote yes. The American people are looking for a solution. I am glad that we will have a vote that will bring us near that solution, much closer to that solution. And that is a se the second vote here, which will open up the government and then allow us to debate border security. And again, I urge enough of my Republican colleagues to join we Democrats in voting for that proposal. It's already passed the House that could open up the government. I yield the floor. Under the previous order, the Senate stands in recess until 11 a.m. tomorrow. The Senate will be back at 11 a.m. Eastern tomorrow, but they're in the waning moments of today's session.